Hey. Hi, welcome. How you doing? I'm hi, how are you? I'm good. So, what can I get you? Let me share some dim sum, please. Okay, coming right up. Meeting someone? Yeah, I don't know what to see. I just want. Ugh. If it were one person, I would have guessed, but two? Nah. I think I'll just see you to share some guessing. I'll tell you. Okay. Stephanie, too. Stephanie? Yeah. Cameroon's actress and producer, producer of the famous <laughs> Saving Bango, and has some other acting roles like from When the Levees Broke by Musin Derek and The Planter's Plantation by Young Jinga. Look at who knows so well about these people. Feel good. Cameroon's singer, songwriter, and producer, former member of the group Rhythms, Rhythms. now solo, has songs like Shabasiko and Bikosa. Bikosa. Uh huh. Right. What did you expect? <laughs> ah, speak of the devil. I guess. Good luck. Hey. hey. Welcome. Hi. How are you? I am good. The black man. I mean, what doesn't look good on you, by the way? Everything does. I'm warm cheek. So what, <laughs> so what are you doing? I'll have what you're having. Okay. Yes, please. So tell me, how's life been treating you? Obviously? Well, it's been fun. Yeah. Actually, it's been fun. I've been, you know, working on my projects, my business, my yeah. kids, yeah. myself. So generally, it's been fun. I cannot complain. I mean, I mean, if you talk about kids, let me start from there. Yes. Uh, you kind of you're a single mom. Yes, I am. How, how, how do you juggle between being a single mom, the kids, and the business, and the, your career? How does that work, like, all that? You know, I get that question a lot. And um, the simple answer is I prioritize. Okay. You know, I just try to see how, which thing is important when. I yeah. try to compartmentalize and, um, you know, so that none of them hurt each other. Yeah. But at the end of the day, my kids are my priorities. Yeah. And, um, I just try to make it work, okay. generally. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what, what is your biggest, what is your life principle? Well, because every human being, we, we, have a, we have a thing that we say, okay, this is how I operate in my life, this is how I operate. What is your own life principle like? That's a good question. I just feel like, um, to treat people right, okay. do unto others what you would like them to do, do to, to you. you. Yeah, yeah I, I basically live by that principle because I believe that um, the energy you put out, that's what you get. Yeah. So I try to leave a positive impact with everyone that I encounter. Yeah. I'm a very happy, jolly person. I'm an like, I'm just that kind of person that I easily vibe with people. So I try to leave people with that, you know, with that memory of me, like, hey, yeah. Steph is a cool person, you know, I try to do good as much as I can. I'm not perfect, you yeah. know, I have my own flaws, but I try my best, you know, to play the good part in people's books, yeah. Before you came, Flavia and I were, were talking about your, your whole profile, about Okay. You, that. And that's my well informed bartender. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So, so uh, you started in the industry, the moving industry, as, as, a, as, a, as an actor. Yes. You know? and uh, now dive into production and all that. How do you, you know, some people would, the whole pressure that comes with it, just mm -hmm. by being an actor alone, mm -hmm. the pressure that comes with it. How do you handle the pressure of the work? How do you handle pressure from or social media? You know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I started in the film industry, yeah. I didn't really have the thick skin as we call it, right? Because I was just coming from the corporate world and I just thought that things were this easy and all of that. I was basically living in La La Land. Yeah. But when I got in, I actually got vaccinated because generally I'm a very outspoken person. Um, you know, sometimes I react before yeah. thinking. Yeah. And that got me when I got into the industry. So I had to learn the hard way. Yeah. You know, anybody who knows me will know that before Steph was like, you know, always involved in one thing or the other, you know, and stuff like that. But as I just, you know, grew through the industry and with time, yeah. I understood the industry better. I understood that some people will capitalize on using your weaknesses against you. Yeah. And when that happens, you know, they use it for their benefit. Yeah. So I had to take a step back and reevaluate myself 
and the entire industry and um, just decided you know how I was going to approach situations react to situations the people I was going to associate myself with and that, I mean basically I don't have friends in the industry yeah I have colleagues, colleagues. that I respect that I admire who inspire me that I was thinking that you're my you friend know? Oh. no you know friendship is a word that is overrated everybody oh, yeah. feel like you know I have people in the industry who have become family which means it's no longer about friendship French. as in what people put on social media friends this and yeah. that people that I know that if something is happening to me I can pick up my phone even in the middle of the night and call not just you to know. call you short but the first time I heard you say that you left the corporate world mm -hmm. into get into movies i was gonna ask you are you insane <laughs> <laughs> seriously because now because you're talking like people, my family my because, village people of course because yeah. many, many people would want to uh most entertainers these days mm -hmm. they always tell you like okay i'm trying to go corporate yes because that's where the money is this is yes. why the fact that i'm in entertainment but you left corporate and came into entertainment mm -hmm. i'm listening <laughs> the honest truth is i'm someone who easily gets bored i'm a sagittarius i always want to to different things yeah you know I always want to try new experiences and film is something that I'm passionate about okay. I worked for weather for like seven years seven and a half years and um, my my job became like a routine like I wake up every day I know that every day I have to wake up at five I'll be at the office by seven yeah I have um, induction meetings I have HR meetings i have hsc meetings and all those things like almost every day same yeah. thing over and no over fun. and it was becoming boring the money was very good don't get me wrong yeah but the routine of it all was becoming very boring and so um in 2017 ending 2017 beginning 2018 you know the oil and gas industry was going through a crisis period and um, we were offered to be paid off or you know stay back and yeah. so it was just going through a transition period and I was like you know what if they can pay me off and I have that kind of money what am I doing here let me just go and follow my passion maybe this is God telling me like you know go after your dreams and stuff so I took a leap of faith and um, I decided to come into the film industry full-time what is your biggest fear in life which I want whenever you think about you be like oh my god I don't want to experience it. What is your biggest fear in life? To fail my kids. Okay. Yeah. What, what, what is that aspect that you think like, if this doesn't happen, it means I've failed them? If I cannot provide and protect, okay. it means I've failed them as a mother. So that's my number one role in this life as a human being. That's yeah. my number one job in this life as a human being. If I'm not able to do that, then it means I've failed as a mother. Okay. Yeah. Are there some things that you've, you've probably done or from some things that the way you have reacted to some certain things are probably based on social media in social media in real life that you think that uh you could do better oh absolutely you, you could have done better and, and on. so what what life lesson did you learn from some of those things and well we make mistakes and we learn from them and grow from them right yeah. so i think that there's certain situations that i would have probably handled better if yeah. given a second chance yeah but what I don't do is I don't dwell on regrets because everything that happens in life, it's either you learn from it and grow from, it. from it. So I don't, I don't dwell on regrets. I'm just like, okay, this will not happen again. Okay. This is the lesson that I've learned. This is what I've been able to understand from this situation. Okay. So basically I'm moving out of this with some experience, with some knowledge, and I'm not going to do it again. So I, I don't really have examples that I can pinpoint, but generally that's how I view any you know, thing that I've gone through in life that I could actually turn one, some one advice that you could give someone who is watching you, who wanted to, who give me, who give Flavie, you know, we're sitting and talking to you. So yes. We keep learning every day. So we're, we're, we're all work in progress. Yes, work in progress. For students of so life. So we'd want to learn something from you. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice that you could give someone who is thinking of making some decisions that you made, who is thinking of getting into your same path? Like mm -hmm. probably gets into movies, probably mm -hmm. gets into all like changing life path mm -hmm. from one thing that that might be, or I might see a job that gives me money and I look mm -hmm. at okay, I still feel like I have this burning desire to be on TV only. Mm -hmm. What is the advice you can give someone when it comes to changing their, their life? Something like um, I would say in life generally, personal life, you know, as far as being a mom, being in relationships is concerned, I feel like we should always you know, give a try out, you know, because you never know, you never know 
what is on the other side yeah. if you don't try, yeah. you know. And um, for the industry, I feel like before coming into the industry, whether as an actor, whether as a producer, I think the number one advice that I'll give anybody is to have a side hustle. Okay. Is to have a side hustle because this industry is not um, financially sustainable, if yeah. I can put it that way right yeah. now. And um, when you're chasing your passion, you're chasing fame, and all of that, there is a certain image that you have to maintain. There is a certain way you have to, you know, show yourself out there, look out there, because at the end of the day, it's show business. Yeah. One does not go without the other. the other. So you need to be able to have a side hustle that can be able to make you to maintain that lifestyle yeah. while you're, you know, chasing, chasing the dream. The and if you're lucky and you have that breakthrough, then that's it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much for spending time from your evening. I know you should have a very busy evening. I mean, Shoot. Of course. <laughs> so thank you very much for taking our time from your busy evening to come sit and have a drink with me and have a chat. I, you know, with your beautiful. It's not mine. It's not mine because you. My, is it mine? It's your beautiful oh. co-host. It's my busy it mine. <laughs> so thank you. Before you go, huh? yes. uh, we want to just talk about music. You okay. know, everybody listen to music. Uh, I'm a very good singer when it comes to the shower. Mm -hmm. You know, we are when I'm in the shower. I'm we like, both are. <laughs> everybody, I think everybody is when it comes to the shower. So what we we'll do is the fact is that we're gonna have we're gonna have three different words. I'm gonna give you one, and you give me a song, a Cambodian song that has a kind of that word inside. Hmm. You, okay. So if okay. I cannot give it, you have a shot for my beautiful bartender, Flavi. All right. So and despite okay. the fact that you have your whiskey there, we're still gonna give you some shots if you don't get any one. Mm. Give you extra shot and dry, no rocks. Just dry. So you better get it right. Do you guys have small pepe <laughs> soya somewhere? <laughs> you get pepe after. <laughs> so, so are you ready? All right, let's go. Uh, the first word I'm going to give you is um, mago. Hey, that loco is song now. It's <laughs> yeah. Hi, I know this song. But I don't, I she oh my God. Just, just give her, just give her. I it's okay like that, it's okay like that. It's okay, don't, don't, don't give her too much shot. <laughs> Let's go. Nice. That was really nice. <coughs> time. Before you know, oh, time, time don't, don't go. go. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> that was that was good. Okay. <laughs> Next word, caramel. But why why why, why are you doing this? Two. Caramelo. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Give me a shot. <laughs> That was good. That was good. Oh. Lovely, thank you very much, mm -hmm. uh, Steffi. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for having me. Yeah, for having this time with me this evening. <laughs> I, I appreciate, appreciate. Lovely and myself, we appreciate it, right? Thank you, guys. <laughs> so, guys, Wait. thank you very much. Stay for, hot. Stay hot. <laughs> guys, thank you very much for being there. And of course, it's uh, we're going to have who our next guest is. You had Flavio already gave me the profile. So let's just see who the person is. Because of the internet, so they don't de feel at me. Some people they wonder, say so now we did do a me. Mommy, I'm picking them, don't they start to dance up. And everybody, hey, hey, hey. Pico, pico, go, pico, pico, say, hey, hey. On a pesa, come on. Pico, pico, go, pico, pico, say, hey, hey. I mean, I wanted to shabba. <laughs> that had to come. That, that had to come. You know, I wanted to be an artist, but, you know, music sat me down. <laughs> on a Monday morning, it said to me, you, the bender. You can never <laughs> be my G. <laughs> <laughs> no, you and I don't have any relation. Thank yeah. you for having me for our whiskey. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. So, what is that one thing that makes you as an artist? That thing that, whenever you reflect to, it builds you as an artist? Um, 
First of all, my granddad uh, was an artist, a singer, a choir master. He used, they used to travel back in the days to Nigeria, to to, to Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, Congo, yeah. some parts of Congo too. So growing up, I always hear him sing. My mom too sings. And my dad always played his uh, old school Jimmy Cliff, uh, San Juan Toma back in the days yeah. and all stuff. So growing up in that environment, it actually inspired me a lot. And though I aspired to, I aspire to be a, 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 an artist who draw paints, designs, yeah. paints, yeah. uh, because of Max Sakolienga, or inspire me because I used to attend his uh, his classes, his painting, abstract painting classes, and I never, yeah, I was surrounded with music, but I never imagined that one day I will be on a platform to talk about music yeah. or to be a musician. And I just feel like all these factors paved my way to get so into an becoming an artist. What what is your what is your your motto? As an artist, or as a human being, what is your motto? Because okay, come on, we have Facebook for a line. I don't know mm -hmm. what we that means in there and all that. What is your motto as as a human, as an artist? Um, first of all, patience. Okay. Consistency, research, hard work, God. Those five. Patience, consistency, consistency hard, hard work, work, and God. I like the last one because you know without all all of this. No, no, it's this impossible. Without, without God, all this Yeah, it's impossible yeah. because I come from a family where uh, we got free, we were good fearing, and I just believe that everything that I'm doing now, every achievement that I've had in my life, it's because of God. Because I always put God at the forefront. Be it I'm going for a show, be it I'm about to do a music, be it I'm about to produce for another artist. Yeah. I always pray to make sure that He blesses and endorses. The, the project and it always works for me. That's grace. You and I would uh, attest to the fact that when you started music uh, a couple of years back, more than a decade now since you started music, and you started with a couple of other people, not as a group, I'm talking about other people who started music at that time, but some of them are not where to be found at this point in time. It means that there is something aside your motto and the resilience, you know, the hard work and God, there was some spice that you must have you must have added to your your craft and all that what is that thing that makes you stand out that thing that makes you be up to this point after a, almost a decade of doing music um i i was actually talking about this all the day with a friend of mine um most uh most of the people that we i started singing with back in the days <sighs> i mean i even put in the lyrics one of the songs that i have with joe v i think i i I implemented that okay. you know, a concept inside. Uh, I don't go stop till I blow, 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 blow. Man only sing since the taste of my loco. Me and my men, then we start from grace or poor. Some of them now we know the, hear them no more. I don't go stop till I blow, blow, blow. Man don't knock beat since the taste of the Lelo show. Me and my men, then we start from Moliko. Now they know they play my song for Colorado, do. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's most, so, of the, that's most of the most of this most of my friends, my colleagues, most of them now are teachers, pastors, civil servants. Yeah. You know, but I'm still there because I think the what's giving me that drive is patience. Yeah, yeah, my patience is too. <laughs> the level of patience that I have, trust me, is beyond your imagination. Yeah, I'm actually patient. I, I act, I'm actually passionate about music. And I research a lot. Okay. When it comes to music, I'm like a baby. I'm like an infant. You're learning like every, so, every yeah, and right? I'm so excited about music. Yeah. And for me, that's the drive and that patience because I've I've I've, I've come across a lot of tribulations, a lot of disappointments, a lot of difficult moments, but I never gave up because I had this conception that it's not yet my time. Yeah. When my time comes, everything's going to change, especially when I see that it works for others. Yeah. Seeing the story, for example, like Bonner Boy, I'm a, I'm, I've been a fan of Bonner Boy since day one, yeah. you know, and seeing succeeding, I was like, okay, it was like an inspiration for me. It was like a success story that inspired my, my life. And I'm like, okay, why not me? Let me just keep doing what I'm doing and my own day is going to come. Uh, okay, so let's talk about, uh, as an artist, as an entertainer, there always come a time where there are scandals online, there, there, you know, there, there, there's some social media backlash and all those, those, those things. 
how do you because i know how difficult it would be it could be like when all these things are coming to you you know left and right and all that how do you handle the pressure from social media how do you handle the backlash the insults and all those things how do you handle them i've never encountered it but i encountered it recently yeah. like especially when i i i i will not say parted ways with my colleague but okay. after when we decided to face our different, different. you know uh, visions yeah. i received a lot of uh insults i received a lot of of irritating messages but there was one thing at the back of my mind don't offer a word yeah and i never did sometimes i will i will like <laughs> i will like th th there's always that spirit i always say no reply that guy reply that guy sometimes i'm at the verge of doing it I'll, but that small voice says don't do, don't do it. So you think the act of going. silence is a thing that one could use, you know, to overcome uh, bullying on social media or attacks on digital space? You think the act of silence is something that you could use, right? Silence, silence says a lot. Okay. And uh, one thing that always uh, that always uh, made me to be silent, that actually motivated me, was that before social media, there was Phil Bill. Yes. Before social media, there was rhythms. Yeah. Before social media. There was this music thing, there was this music thing that I was doing. So why reply? People come on social media, especially on Facebook, and say whatever. They have their opinions. Who are you to come? Each and every person has his own, you know, point of view. So you come in trying to explain yourself, you're instead, uh, you, I feel like you'll be aggravating the whole issue. So yeah. it's preferable to just stay silent. Stay silent. So that's what, that's my motto. When each time I, I encounter such a, uh, uh, Challenge, yeah, always. challenges, I always like, just, just keep it on low. Don't say anything. So before we, we go to, uh, a small form part of, the show of, of our conversation, uh, what is your biggest fear in life? What is that one thing in life that when you think about it, you feel like, oh my God, I'm going crazy. For me, my biggest fear is, you know, uh, losing losing someone I love. Like, you know, probably my mom dying, my dad dying, or my siblings, yeah. or my child, or my, 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 my fiance and all that. Uh, so for you, what is your biggest fear in life? My biggest fear is feeling, I don't want to feel like, okay. don't. That's why I'm still here because I don't want to feel. I walk extremely. I walk seven times than, than most of the people that I've come across because I don't want to feel. Yeah. Each time, each time we get into a new year, I always try to evolve. I always try to move seven steps ahead of each. Other. In fact, this year I'm already done with this year. Yeah. You know, I always try to make sure so as to avoid failing, yeah. avoid encountering some certain situations that's going to give me setbacks. You know. So I, I'm always scared of failing. Yeah. I don't like. I fuck. I hate failure. Yeah. So what? What? What is failure? What do you consider failure? Failure is not. It's actually not achieving what you aspire of achieving. Oh, achieving. That's failure for me. Okay. Because each year I always have my plans. I always have my 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 vision for that year. My theme for that year. So I, I'm always scared of not achieving that. So what I do is that I work seven times harder to make sure I achieve that. Okay. Because for me, I feel like I'm, in, I'm on a mission okay. in this country. I'm on a mission. I'm not like any ordinary artist. Okay. I'm sorry to say that, but that's the truth. I'm on a mission, and that mission is to ameliorate our, our sound. Okay. I want the world to discover our sound, our music. To them. Now, uh, thank you very much for sharing that little with us. Uh, with me, I just want to say with me because, you know, from our conversation, I had to pick one of the things that I, I think I could amend and you know implement in my own life. And someone was watching right now. I think Flavie did the same. I think you were you were in our conversation, so definitely she has one or two things to pick from, from, the, from the conversation. But before we go, uh, we have the game. So what will happen is that I'm going to give you a word. You will sing a Cameroonian song that has the word that word. Wow. In it. So if you don't do it, in the I'll count to five. If you don't do it, you take a shot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. Let's, no, let's, let's do it. Um, caramel. Jamon caramel. Caramel. Okay. Uh, that's just good that you get that one. Uh, this is. Okay. Yeah, this is. Okay. This is spaghetti. I just produced a song. Right? <laughs> Go see. <laughs> okay. What's your, what's your favorite Cameroonian song? Ignore your song. Okay. Not. <laughs> Ignore your song. A favorite Cameroonian song. Um. 
Yeah. I love almost all Caribbean songs. Just I, the one the one favorite one of your favorite most of the Caribbean songs. I'm of Cash by Joey. Gosh. Yeah. That's okay. for me that was a revolution of Caribbean sound. Yeah. Taking they could see melanchine with trap, hip hop, man, that was smart. I think for me that's my favorite. Okay, bread. Oh Musango, Musango. <laughs> let me let me use Musango. Use the word Musango. Musango. Mm -hmm. Use the word to do. The, there's a Cameroonian song that has the word Musango in it. Ah. It's a young Cameroonian artist. It's a Musango. It's a very popular song on social media. I think that's. Uh, I don't got it, Musango. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> 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 but man. I listen to every Cameroonian do, song. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I think I'm going to take that shot because of that. I'm not, I'm not, it was a shot. So. Man, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> thank you very much for talking to me. I wanted you to take that whiskey, but with all observations, you do a lot of research and you know that. Because this guy is, is a young guy. Yeah, he's so talented. And for you to know that song, it means it means you 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 play a lot. I wish I wish we could have have this conversation like longer than the way it is. Yeah. Because we have a lot to talk about. But time will not let us do that. So no, no big deal. I just want to say thank you very much for you know spending this evening with me and you know having a glass. Or two. I actually love the whiskey. Uh, okay. It's pure. Baby. Mm. Like the whiskey. <laughs> She's playing herself. No one.